All right, welcome back. Um, okay, in the last Simple Skills video, I made a mention that I might do a Simple Skills video on multimeter, and there was an enormous amount of interest. Loads of you said you'd be interested in that. You've never known what they are. It's a confusing little instrument. You see them being used by technicians and mechanics all the time, and it's a scary little thing, because let's face it, auto electrics is a bit of a dark art, isn't it? And it's not something that's that easy to understand from a logic point of view. There's a lot to know. If you imagine that the average auto electrician or electrical engineer has done a three to five year apprenticeship and these days it's even a degree course. So <laughs> let's get this absolutely straight. This is simple skills, how to do a couple of things with a multimeter, that's all. There's no way on earth I could teach in this kind of video, a short thing like this, how to become proficient with one of these. But if I give you some insight in how to understand the dial, what it does on the front, without boring you too much, and then show you how to take a couple of measurements, it might just open up Pandora's box of what this thing is, and what you can do with it, and how useful it can be to you in your motorcycle dealings, in your garage, or your car, whatever it might be. So I'm going to keep this as reasonably straightforward as I can, as uncomplicated as possible, and show you a little bit about the venerable multimeter. Okay, so welcome back to the Always Garage. Multimeter, simple skills. Let's get going. Right, here we are. This is a pretty typical little multimeter. They take different shapes, but this is a very common one. You get this from Maplin's. They're about 10 or 15 pounds. This is the sort of thing that you'll probably have for yourself for DIY at home. As I showed you just now, you've got the whole thing's battery operated. It comes out. It's got a little rubber case, which just holds it safe. It stops it getting knocked about in a busy workshop. And that can also, with a little prop on the back, that can sit on an engine bay or a bench and do its job. Okay, now it's one of these things that has about five or six different meters in one, which is why it's called a multimeter. And it measures voltage here. That's the voltage from a battery, DC or direct current voltage. This one over here, obviously that's off. This is AC or alternating current. That's the current you get out of the whole sockets in the wall. This is your ammeter that measures the amps, the current itself that's coming out of the wire. And this under here measures resistance in ohms. You've got an ohm meter, a voltmeter, and an ammeter, or two kinds of voltmeter. And there's a few other little tasks it does as well when you get a little bit more advanced in it. But all I want to do today is just show you the basic simple check on the voltage on an old battery. And then we'll also do at the same time a resistance check because that's something else you'll use quite a lot. So first of all, you need to plug the leads in. You get a black and a red lead, pretty straightforward. Black lead plugs into the black socket. Ain't hard, is it? One of them, that's common, or ground. There's the little universal symbol for ground or earth. It's plugged in there. It's coming in a bit closer for you. There we go. And the red lead, now you've got a couple of options on the red lead, but we're going to do a voltage check first. So V for voltage, just plug that in there. And then we're ready to go. So you've got two leads, as you can see, with a probe on each, on each end. And naturally red for live and black for earth. Simple as that. So what I'm going to do is connect these up to a battery, then switch it on, and we'll come down this scale and show you how the different... Um, load values work. So just connect it up first of all. So the first thing we do is switch it on to where it says 600. Now 600 is the, that's 600 volts, that's the full scale deflection, if you want to talk about it in the electrician speak, the full scale deflection that this is measuring up to 600 volts. So you've got three numbers. So it could go 6, 0, 0, but it's actually only got 13 volts. So this battery is kicking out 13 volts volts at the moment. But if that's not accurate enough for me, because remember, sometimes when you're testing the battery, you might want to check whether it's 12.5 volts, 12.9, 12.1, or over 13. So to get that more accurate, we come down to 200. So if we click the dial back one, it suddenly gives us a decimal point. So that will give us up to 200 volts, and it's currently measuring 12.7. So you can see that the first full-scale deflection of 600 is right up there at 13. It rounds it up. But if you want a more accurate reading, come down to 200. So you're being a little bit more sensitive on the measurement. And it's actually giving us 12.7. And yes, indeed, you can get even more sensitive than that by dropping it down to 20. So that's a maximum full scale deflection of 20 volts. It's giving you 12.75. Now that's really, really accurate. You don't need it any more accurate than that. But there are two other measurements. So just to explain them, as we come to the first one, this is 2000 millivolts or two volts. So to me, if I designed this, I'd put two on there because then that's obvious. But then electricians and electrics, it's a complicated business and the next scale of measurement after a volt is a millivolt. So 2000 millivolts is two volts. So if we come down to that, remember, we're gonna draw our maximum full scale deflection on this 
This one's 20 and we're at 12, so we're under it. This one is two volts or 2000 millivolts. So that's two volts, full scale deflection. We're currently kicking 12, it's gonna to be too much. So we're at 12, we're only looking to measure up to two. So if I just do that and put it on there, what you get is this, it's kind of a default. It just shows the number one. It shows them the 12 volts that this thing is kicking out is too hefty for this measurement, which is only two. So we come back up to 20. So this number is the number above that you're looking to measure. So we've got a 12 volt battery kicking 12.75, nice and healthy, and that's measuring up to 20. So that will give us two decimal points. That's a simple voltage check. And also, while you leave it connected, you watch whether this drops, because as it's connected, you're pulling power out of that battery. And if that's holding fast, and that number isn't dropping, then you've got a healthy battery. But if while it's connected, that number's dropping away all the time, that means you possibly have a dead cell in the battery. So that's a simple way to check voltage using a multimeter. It's this scale around here. Let me just switch it off when we're done. Right, the next thing, we'll just show you this one, ohms resistance. Show you how to do that again. Okay, right, glossed over that I know, but what I want to talk about is the next and most, I think, the most common check that you'll make using your multimeter once you get it. You'll check your voltage, you'll check you're getting the voltage power from your battery. Very often, that's even that's not that common, but the most common thing that I use this multimeter for is checking fuses, checking continuity and resistance. Quite simply, if you imagine uh, that electrical current is like water flowing along a hose pipe or along a metal pipe, and the inside of that pipe gets furred up with lime scale. Therefore, the water as it goes through will resist the nice free flow. It will slow down, so you'll get resistance. Well, an electrical current isn't that far away. I know it's an analogy and we're not talking about plumbing. The point I'm talking about is, once something that flows in one direction slows down, it doesn't work as efficiently. So we're checking to see if the current as it goes along that piece of wire, any piece of wire it may be, whether it is resisting or whether it's continuing along nicely. So we're checking for resistance and continuity. It's all in the name, ain't hard, is it? So what I'm going to do now is show you how to check simple things like a fuse. I'll show you what I mean by this. Have a look. So here we are. Right, a little simple experiment to show you how to check a fuse. It's not easy. Get the multimeter set up back on voltage. So you need the black lead in the bottom as it always lives and then the red lead just above it in the central one. That's the voltage check. And when you come to switch it on, we're going to run that dial right the way down to the bottom, to this, this left-hand section, which is for ohms and resistance, for checking resistance. So it's an ohm meter, if you like. And we're going to check the highest value, which is 200, right down at the bottom. So I'm going to spin that all the way to the bottom, switch it on in that section. And what you'll get on the dial is one point. It will just set there ready because it's not measuring anything. Now what this, to briefly explain the, the opening reading, what you get in there, is these leads of now, now we've switched that to there, these leads have got a little tiny bit of electric current bleeding out the end of them. There's a nine volt battery lives inside there, one of the little square ones with the two terminals on the top. And that battery is supplying just a little bit of current coming out of here. And there's no, they're not touching at the moment, so there's no continuity. But if we just do a check, you'll see, if I touch the tips together, that makes a circuit, it connects. And then we'll start to get a reading. And if you check out the reading there, we're getting 0.3. That is 0 0.3 ohms of resistance in the leads. Now you should have zero or very close to zero and your leads are absolutely fine. If you're showing one or two ohms of resistance in the leads, then they're worn out and you should just replace them or the multimeter itself. But when you check them together, you should get zero or close to zero. And that shows you what we're getting there. So that means that the piece, the little bit of current that's coming through these leads is now flowing through these leads nicely. So that shows disconnected and connected. You're looking for a connection and you're seeing that once we touch them together, everything connects up nicely. So the great way to test a fuse, if we take a regular spade fuse, one of those little things that you see a hundred times in your vehicle, and we just touch each side of it like that, we see that the current flows healthily through the fuse and we get back to our 0.3 of an ohm of resistance because the continued current is going through the fuse. So you're getting good continuity. That's correct. So you're checking basically the fuse hasn't blown. So if you're not sure, because when you look at the fuse, you can't see a break, stick the old multimeter leads on, on the continuity side and you'll test it. And here's another one, use the glass ones. Now, these old glass ones, as you're probably aware, 
you can look at those hang on focus and you can see inside there you get a little piece of wire a little wire filament now sometimes you can see the filament isn't broken but the fuse doesn't really seem to want to work so all you do again so if I put the leads on the end there we are tiniest fraction of resistance more than the leads themselves so that is a good healthy fuse and it's passing current nicely but this little tiny one down here this fuse again it looks healthy doesn't look to be anything wrong with it but when I connect it up to the leads as you can see nothing happens at all on the dial because the fuse itself is blown I'm not getting any continuity if I double check by touching the leads together I get a nice healthy zero or close to zero but if I touch the fuse I'm getting nothing at all the machine just doesn't react because it doesn't know that it's connected because this fuse is broken so that's a great way to test the fuse stick it on continuity and check it for that Right, I hope that gives you a little bit of insight. That's what simple skill stuff is about. I'm not in designing at all to tell you how to do vehicle electrical testing. As I said, I think earlier on, a doctor uses a thermometer. This is the ability to use that thermometer. It doesn't make you a doctor. It doesn't tell you how to interpret that information. That's something else. So all this is really is information. Knowledge is power. This will tell you what current, what resistance or what voltage is coming out of or through a wire, quite simple. But what you choose to do with that, what you then learn about what to do with that and how you diagnose the subsequent fault down the line is another thing for you to learn. However, you can't do any of that till you know how to look at, understand the dial and understand how to do a few experiments with a multimeter. So what I suggest you might do if you've never seen one of these but you always want to get involved in it or you, would, you have one and you don't know how to use it, which is not uncommon, then do some experiments, get some bulbs, get an old battery and start experimenting and understand it. And you'll learn simply through practice. You'll simply look at it, you'll get that eureka moment in your head. Yeah, yeah well, that makes sense. I got it now. Okay. And then when you get a fault with your vehicle in the future, you soon find yourself under the bonnet of your car or under the seat of your bike, testing and checking things and looking cool. That's what it's all about. It's just about getting yourself out of trouble and being self-sufficient. And I know I haven't really touched much on the amps and the current side of things, but honestly, these videos can be hours and hours long. One of the things I said earlier that I suffer with with watching things, any video on electrics is staying awake. I really do. It's just mind-numbingly boring to me. It's just part of, it's, it's lacing together all the fun stuff. That's how I see it. But it, I think if you've got the ability to diagnose faults, get yourself out of trouble, that's what this is about. So if you want to get into it, go and buy yourself a cheap one. You can get it from the DIY store. They're not expensive and they have a world of information that can help you out. And if there's any questions, drop them underneath in the comments box. And if you are an electrician, I appreciate your support on this. If you've got any suggestions, if you want to answer, if you're an electrician and you want to answer any of the comments underneath, then please feel free to do so because it is spreading the knowledge, the, knowledge, the skill, and the information that we all have between us that makes the motorcycle community very special indeed and a little bit better than other communities that might be out there. Okay, thanks for watching. Take it easy, ride safe. See you next time.